Okay, let's continue talking about industrial reactors and reactions. Let's talk about liquid phase reactions. Liquid phase reactions. I'm sure that you're recalling CSTR, right? Because CSTR is used for liquid phase reactions. Semi-batch reactors and CSTRs are used primarily for liquid phase reactions. What is a semi-batch reactor? Well, you know, it's not a batch reactor where there is no input or output, but it's semi-batch. You could have either input or output. A semi-batch reactor has essentially the same disadvantages uh, as the batch reactor, which you know about already. However, a semi-batch reactor has the advantage of temperature control by regulation of the feed rate that's good advantage what else the, the capability of minimizing unwanted side reactions through the maintenance of a low concentration of one of the reactants okay for the first advantage you can actually regulate the temperature by regulating the feed rate Meaning, if the reaction was highly exothermic, if the reaction was highly exothermic. So let's take, oops, uh, let's take this reaction. A goes to B gives you D, and the reaction is highly exothermic. And you decided that initially you will charge your reactor with B only, and then slowly you're going to add A. So if you put all A into the reactor at the same time, okay, then the concentration of A is high, the concentration of B is high, the rate of reaction will be high, the rate at which heat is released from the reaction is high, so the temperature will go up. So what you can do is, what you can do is, you instead of putting introducing A at a very high rate, you introduce it at a very slow rate, right? And then the rate of heat generated or heat released from the reaction would be slow. And maybe you can provide a heat exchanger that can catch up with this amount of heat released. So it can remove this heat at a rate which is equal to the rate at which heat is released from the reaction which is a manageable manage a reasonably slow rate because I'm introducing A at a slow rate okay that's the first explanation for the first advantage the second ex the explanation for the second advantage can be seen here we said we want to minimize unwanted side reaction so imagine you have this reaction A plus B gives you D and this is my desired reaction but also some of A could react with the product D to produce undesired reaction. So again, here, do you want to have high concentration of A inside your reactor? No, you don't, right? Because if I have high concentration of A, then any D produced could react with A to produce an undesired reaction. So what I do is I always maintain low concentration of A. I maintain low concentration of A, but high concentration of B. Again, this can be achieved by simply charging B initially, right? And then slowly introduce A. And this is, of course, a semi-batch setup. The semi-batch reactor is also used for two-phase reactions in which a gas usually is bubbled continuously through the liquid. So there is continuous input to the system. There is no output, but continuous input of the, to the system where you have a gas introduced and bubbled through the liquid. And this gas is a reactant and it's reacting with the liquid to give you, for instance, a liquid product. Okay, great. Hey, one of the advantage of using CSTR that it enables you to do really intense agitation, intense mixing. So as therefore a CCR is used when intense agitation is required. And in the book here, you can find this table, which gives you a 
a price of a CCR or a batch uh, reactor, okay, depending on their sizes. The CCR can either be used by itself, okay, so standalone, or as part of a series of battery or battery of CCR. So you can see up here, this CCR is not used alone. It's part of a reactors and series. So the feed here is introduced to the first CCR and then the outlet is actually the feed to the second CCR and so on. So these are CCRs and series and you can have, for example, three CCRs and series and another CCR, three CCRs and series and a third one a third line of CCR and the three, so you have a, a battery, a battery, an array of CCRs. Okay. Advantage, easy, advantage CCR, of course, talking about the advantage CCR, it's easy to maintain good temperature control with a CCR. Why is that? Well, you got it right because it is well mixed. How is that helping in controlling the temperature? Well, let's see. Here, Shabab, whatever reactant I'm introducing to the CSTR, it gets right away mixed up, right away mixed up. So you don't have such thing that, oh, I have high concentration of reactant here and low concentration of reactant here. No, I don't have that because the reaction mixture is well mixed, right? So if I had here high concentration, you would say, voila, here, high concentration of reactant, therefore you have high rate of reaction there, and if the reaction was highly exothermic, you'll have huge amount of heat released here, okay? But this is not the case, right? Because the reactant gets dissolved right away into the mixture so if this here was ca naught here for instance could be only 0.1 ca naught so low concentration of reactant and therefore low rate of reaction therefore you are not really avoiding having like places which have high temperature and places you have low temperatures all well mixed okay this advantage the concentration of reactant per volume of reactor and CCR is the smallest of the flow reactor. Obviously, that has a disadvantage having low concentration of reactant inside the reactor. What's the disadvantage? Well, low concentration means low rate of reaction. Low rate of reaction means you need large reactor to achieve a given or a, de a desired conversion. So very large reactors are necessary to obtain high conversion. Okay. Let's talk about gas phase reactions now. Gas phase reactions are often carried out in tubular reactors. The tubular reactor is relatively easy to maintain because you don't have any moving part. It's just a tube, right? Just a tube or a cylinder. It usually produces the highest conversion per reactor volume of any of the flow reactors. Okay, good. So the tubular reactor will produce high conversion per unit volume of the reactor compared to the other flow reactors like CSTR. The disadvantage of the tubular reactor is that it is difficult to control temperature within the reactor. And hot spots, hot spots can occur when the reaction is exothermic. Let's look at the plug flow reactor, tubular reactor. So we said all, let's take a simple reaction, A goes to B. And it is highly exothermic. So at the beginning, at the beginning you have here high concentration of A, correct? course at the end the concentration is low but here high concentration of A that means high rate of reaction that means high rate of energy release so if you check the temperature the temperature could be 
going up at the beginning and then decreasing so even even if you are cooling even if you are cooling still you might end up with high jump in temperature because the rate at which you are removing heat in this first portion is very small compared to the rate at which heat is produced by the reaction because of high rate of reaction and because of the exothermity of the reaction so therefore i could end up with hot spot most homogeneous liquid phase reactions or reactors are cstrs whereas most homogeneous gas phase flow reactors are tubular The tubular reactor is commonly found either in the form of one long tube. Do you see that one long tube? So the tube is going here and then back and forth. That's one long tube or as one of a number of shorter reactors arranged in a tube bank, as you can see here and of course here. So this is an example of the steam reformer that I showed you earlier where you had a header beneath this and from the header comes lots of tubes and the same thing with another header this side and so on. Okay, what's that? That's a packed bed reactor, right? Where the bed is fixed, so you can call it a fixed bed reactor. The cost of plug flow reactors and packed bed reactors without catalysts are similar to the cost of heat exchangers because you can see that it's similar to heat exchangers a packed bed also called a fixed bed reactor is essentially a tubular reactor that is packed with solid catalyst particles the heterogeneous reaction system is most often used to catalyze gas reactions if you need to have run a gas phase reaction but you need a catalyst then this catalyst probably would be a solid catalysts which are packed inside the reactor inside the tubes of the reactor or inside the whole tank of the reactor the whole shell disadvantage well the reactor has the same difficulties with temperature control as the other tubular reactor because the concentration at the beginning is very high so the rate of reaction is very high Therefore, the rate of heat, which heat is released, is very high, so you could end up with hot spot at the beginning of the reactor. The catalyst is usually troublesome to replace. Well, imagine this here. This reactor is operated for three years, and of course, you have a catalyst where the reaction is taking place. Imagine your feed stock is hydrocarbon feed stock, so inevitably some of this hard carbon feedstock will be converted to carbon coke and this coke stays with the catalyst particle so it will be jammed you know that the catalyst particle the, all the solid will be jammed and stuck inside the tube and when you want to replace it that will take huge amount of time and huge effort okay one would say okay that's fine once a year no problem once every three years no problem but the problem is sometimes you need to change the catalyst every one minute every few seconds why is that you need to remove that catalyst regenerate it and bring it back so obviously i'm not going to use a packed bed reactor what i'm going to use something else that we're going to explain later okay another disadvantage channeling of the gas flow occurs resulting in ineffective use of part of the reactor bed okay so it's supposed to be packed right the tube is supposed to be packed but sometimes the packing is not that perfect whether in this setup or this setup and you'll end up some places which are not perfectly packed so it's not perfectly packed here not perfectly packed here and you know that the flow of fluid goes through the least resistance channel so part of the flow would just go quickly fast through the reactor without really staying a lot with good contact with the catalyst therefore i'm not using the whole reactor effectively where majority of the flow going through the reactor without even staying there for a long time or contacting the catalyst properly 
Advantage of the packed bed reactor. For most reactions, packed bed reactor gives the highest conversion per weight of catalyst of any catalytic reactor. So we have different catalytic reactor, state through transport reactor, fluidized bed reactor, packed bed reactor. Out of these catalytic reactor, packed bed reactor gives the highest conversion per weight of catalyst. So let's talk about other type of catalytic reactor. Another type of catalytic reactor is in common use is the fluidized bed reactor, fluidized bed reactor. So that's my tube. That's my tube here, cylinder reactor, okay? And if the catalyst was packed into the this reactor, okay? So if we have a flow here, this flow will not move the particles because it's packed and held by another perforated plate. Okay, so that's a fixed bed reactor. However, if there was no here, no plate to hold this catalyst in place, and the flow was fast enough, it would create some movement of the bed. Okay, some movement of the bed. So now we have a fluidized bed. Fluidized bed. If you increase the flow you can have better mixing right better mixing as you can see okay so here we have bubbling of course that's a disadvantage but you have better mixing so maybe the flow should be somewhere between this this speed and this speed okay in order to get a perfect ideal for the high speed reactor because if the flow is very fast then you have some slugging as you can see some place with not much catalyst some place with lots of catalyst and this is bad Okay, and in case if you want to remove this whole catalyst, okay, then the flow should be really very to reduce at very high velocity. Here, so you have you have a lean phase fluidization with pneumatic transport of the catalyst. The fluidized bed reactor is analogous to the CCR in that its content, though heterogeneous, are well mixed. So as I said here, you can see they have good mixing. The catalyst is going up and down. The flow is mixed also as well. So you have good mixing. So that's the similarity between fluidized bed and CCR, which results in an even temperature distribution throughout the bed, thus avoiding hot spot. So there's no hot spot at the beginning anymore. There's no hot spot at the beginning anymore because it's a, you have kind of a mixing there. Okay, great. The fluidized bed reactor can only be approximately modeled as a CCR. For higher precision, it requires a model of its own. So if you don't want high precision and you have an, like an ideal fluidized bed reactor, you can assume that it, you can use the design equation for CCR as well. This type of reactor, the fluidized bed reactor, can handle large amount of feed and solids and has good temperature control. Thus, it is used in a large number of application advantages, the ease of catalyst replacement or regeneration. So if you want to regenerate, you increase the flow, you take the catalyst outside, regenerate it in another reactor. Let's take an example. Okay, the advantage of the ease. This shows the advantage of the ease of regeneration. So here we have your main reactor. Okay, so but I could transport portion of the catalyst to the regenerator because the catalyst is not packed inside the reactor. I regenerate it by, for example, burning the carbon of the catalyst. So the catalyst is deactivated by formation of carbon on the catalyst pellets and inside the pores of the catalyst. Then I can burn the coke of the catalyst by introducing hot air and then after the catalyst being uh, refreshed, can bring it back and place it again into the catalyst. And the f that continues, the cycle continues. Okay, and a good example is the FCCU unit in Bobco, fluidized catalytic cracking unit. That used to be a fluidized bed reactor. Of course, now they did some changes as not a perfect fluidized bed anymore. Okay, the advantages of the ease of catalyst replacement or regeneration are sometimes offset lost 
by the high cost of the reactor and the catalyst regeneration equipment. As you can see, this is more sophisticated than a simple packed bed reactor. So you have to, when you do the design, you have to find out what is better to use a fixed bed or to use a fluidized bed. Does the fluidized bed always have the advantage or maybe the deactivation is not fast and you can just simply run a packed bed where you can replace the catalyst every year, for example. So, in this chapter and on the CD-ROM, we've introduced each of the major types of industrial reactors, actually the idealized form, okay? But since it's industry, you should know that it's not as ideal as we talk about it in class. So, all the assumptions we mentioned is not 100% applied there. Okay, so we talked about batch, semi-batch, stirred tank, tubular, fixed bed, and fluidized bed reactor. Okay, so you have many variations and modification of these commercial reactors are in current use. So as I said, we will just discuss the standardized form of these reactors. Okay, with this, we reach the end of chapter one. Please revise it very well and be ready for chapter two. Bye for now.